Hi, I'm Karima, one of the BirdAware Silent Rangers, and I'm going to show you how to do a seashore safari. You, once you get started, you won't believe all the different creatures you can find on the beach. Some of the things that you'll want to bring with you on your seashore safari include a small container and a handy utensil such as a spoon, um, any kind of seashore guide that you might have or that you can buy at lots of shops. You'll want shoes that you don't mind getting wet. Don't forget your sun cream and your sun hat if it's super hot and take a bottle of water with you. Before you set off for your seashore safari, be sure to check the tide times. The best time to do a seashore safari is on a low tide and you want to be sure that you know what time the tide is going to be coming back in so that you don't get cut off. Always remember the coastal code while you're out and about on the beach. All these amazing creatures that you're going to find on the beach is what these birds are eating. So look out for birds, move away if they become alert, Keep your dog close to you and follow instructions on signage. So I found an alive oyster, which is always a treat because you'll find lots of the empty shells up at the top of the beach. But you can tell this is alive because it's got both parts of the shell, the top and the bottom. And you can see that crinkly line where the two parts meet. So it's sandwiched shut, which means it's alive inside. But you can also see it's got lots of barnacles growing on it as well. So it's like a little mini habitat in itself. Just gonna pop that back where I found it. Look at this one here then. Is that a crab? That is a crab. That is a broad clawed porcelain crab, I think. And there's another one here. Look how. Can you see how they lie flat against the rocks? Yeah. So you can hardly see them, can you? No. I've also found a piece of um, sea lettuce. That's a type of seaweed. And you can see it's still attached to the rock. So it's still nice and alive. I've got a tiny little crab here and these little sea snails, these are still alive. I think this one's a winkle and this one's a top shell. Oh, you can just see his little antenna sticking out and he's moving. Can you see? One of the cool things that you'll see the seagulls doing is they'll pick these up and then they'll fly really high up into the air and drop it and then it will smash and then they can eat the gooey insides. Always nice to look under rocks to see what's underneath. You just always have to be very careful so you don't crush anything. You can see straight away there's a lot of things living on the rock here. There's a winkle, um, little top shell, mussel. So let's have a look underneath. Oh crab, look, oh look at him. Did you see him? and always make sure you put the rocks very carefully back how and where you found them because that is their home under there. And that is a shore crab. Ooh. And you can tell it's a shore crab because it's got five points either side of its head. Yeah. Ready? In real life. Have I. So wow, look at that. That's a beautiful starfish. I haven't ever seen And here next to it, there's a chitin. And here? Mm, yeah. You can see they look a little bit like, like woodlouse, but they're completely stuck to the rock. Wow. There's lots of different types of seaweeds that you can look for on the beach. I've got three different types here. And you can see how they've anchored themselves nicely. This one's anchored itself um, to a dead shell. I think that's a clam. So that way, at the moment it just looks a little bit kind of dead lying on the floor like that, but when the tide comes in, the shell will keep it anchored on the sea floor and it will wave around like that in the water. So it's very camouflaged, isn't he? Yeah. Beautiful. That is a dead I just want to say how amazing this tiny little fish is, because if you think it's adapted to live in seawater, on the seabed. It always stays in shallow water. But if you think like now, when the tide goes out, it's basically exposed to the air. So to cope with that, it's got a really slimy surface so that it can help stay moist. Um, and it has actually just started raining. 
So that's another amazing adaptation. It now has to deal with freshwater rain falling on it. So it's a pretty cool little creature. Just always be super gentle with these and always put them back where you found them as soon as you can. So this is another shore crab. But you see he's got beautiful colours. He's got a red middle. He's already got some things starting to grow on him which will help in his camouflage. So they're sea spiders. They're really hard to spot. We've put them on a white background so you can easily see them. But when they're on a stone, they're impossible just to see. I spent years looking for these. And once I found my first one, then I can't stop finding them everywhere. So when you finish looking at these amazing little creatures, you can see how fragile they are. So just do your best to very gently usher them back onto a rock or into a small shallow bit of water. All the stones down here, they look like they're just stones, but they are covered in life. So these are covered in barnacles and the periwinkles and top shells. There's all sorts down here. You can see this one here. It's absolutely covered in life. Can you see there's a limpet there? But it's stuck really hard. So they tend to stay on the same place on the rock. But when the tide comes in, they'll actually move around on the surface of the rock and then they'll always go back to their little spot. So we've managed to find ourselves an anemone. I think this is a beadlet anemone. You can see at the moment where it's exposed to the air, it just looks like a slimy jelly-like blob. When the um, tide comes up, the water will rise and this will have some nice frilly tentacles and it should look like quite a pretty kind of flower. Another nice part of a seashore safari is looking around at the top of the beach around the strand line to see what um, empty shells you can find and what things, quite often a lot of things get washed up after a big storm so it's the best time to go out and have a look. And that is a cuttlefish bone. So this is a common whelk and this is the empty egg cases of the common whelk. Quite often people will think that that's just a bit of rubbish or polystyrene. Um, but the cool thing about these is um, these are all the eggs usually in a ball like that. And the first one to hatch out actually eats all the others. It eats all its brothers and sisters. You might also be lucky enough to find some of these. These are, um, again, egg cases of different types of skates and rays. But what you can do is you can take it home and soak it in water, because this is dehydrated at the moment. So if you soak it in water, um, it will expand and you can measure the correct length of it and then you can look it up on the internet and see what species it is. So these are the two different types of oysters that you can find on our beaches. This nice round one is the European oyster. That's our native oyster. You can see the shell is in two parts. And this one is a Pacific oyster, and you can tell the difference because it's got that wavy line around the edge. This one here is actually um, a fossil. So this is a fossilised shell. Um, I think it's called a Tarotella. This is a really good one to look for. So these types of shells are called razor clams. Now again, these two don't go together because you can see they're different sizes, but usually when they're alive, the animal is living inside with the shells together like that and they'll bury themselves really deep down in the mud. I hope you enjoyed our video of our top tips of how to do a seashore safari. If you did enjoy it please give us a like. If you'd like to see more of our videos don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.